and welcome to our first Q&A session where we, where we interview professionals in the mining industry to get an idea of what careers and opportunities that are out there. Our guest today is Julia Potter, who works at, uh, as an engineer and geologist at Colin Nicholas. She specializes in geostatistics and modeling. Uh, she's from Dottyville, Wisconsin. Uh, Julia, thank you for being here with us today, and we're happy to have you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so tell me, tell us about your work and, uh, you know, what, what does a geo geological engineer do? Um, so I work for a consulting firm. Colin Nicholas is a consulting firm. And basically, um, we do everything we can to ensure that our clients, which are usually mining companies, can extract minerals from the ground um, as safely and efficiently as possible. I'm a bit of a specialist, so I get to work on um, almost, not all, but most of our projects um, because most of the projects need, you know, some amount of my expertise, which is really cool because I get to like see all these different types of geologies and mines and stuff like that. Um, and I'd say though that like the majority of my work is spent, I have a really fun and fast computer that I use to um, make 3D models and um, analyze data and present my findings. I've been to so many different places, either for my studies or for work. Um, I do a lot of work in Central Africa in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And so I, I get to go there once or twice a year. Um, I've been doing that since 2014. Um, I've been to Turkey, I've been to all over South America and Central America. I lived off, lived on a boat off the coast of British Columbia for a couple summers mapping. Mm -hmm. And the best part about all of that is mines and exploration is often happening kind of in more remote places, you know, so not, not the type of place that you typically go for a vacation. So you get to meet all these people and do all these things that like the average traveler or vacationer wouldn't ever come across. So I've been like jet skiing in the Congo. Um, wow. I've been, you know, spelunking in Belize. I've done all kinds of really, um, just really fun kind of random travel experiences that just happened because I happened to be in a place when some one of the locals was going jet skiing for example or whitewater rafting or something like that yeah so, when i've gotten to fly in a, several helicopters which is probably the main thing that got me to switch my major to geology because <laughs> i really liked flying around in helicopters really <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh what, what's it what's it like being a woman in the field yeah. i think uh it's definitely it can be difficult but i've also found ways to to connect with others um, in my situation. Um, I became the first female shareholder at my company a couple years ago, which was really exciting. But at the same yeah, time, absolutely. yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was yeah, very exciting, absolutely. but um, I'm still the only one, which we're hoping will change, you know, soon. We're, we're kind of at the beginning of our diversity and inclusion efforts or our journey, um, but really, committing a lot of time and energy and resources to that kind of kind of thing now. So, um, and being an only can be really tough, but at the same time, you do stand out and that, I mean, I feel like I hear that as a joke a lot, but it truly can be a positive thing sometimes. I know it's been mm -hmm. for me, you know, like nobody forgets me when I'm the only, you know, female that's been at a mine site in the Congo in a long time that's from the US, you know, so, um, yeah. <laughs> but also, um, yeah, finding ways to connect with other onlys, whether it be women or other people that are um, minorities in the industry, I think has really helped me realize that there's a lot more of them than I thought. And also mm -hmm. um, there might not be a woman that I can look up to in my own company, but there's a lot of women in the industry that um, have really, that are really impressive and that, you know, I can kind of learn from and model myself after. And for, for that too, you, you are the president of the Women in Mining uh, uh, Club. Can you tell us more about that and what, what you do there? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that was a huge thing for me too. I think um, what, it's really important to me to make sure that, you know, if possible, the women that come up after me have more women to look up to, you know, or have more allies. And, and I 
got involved with women in mining because, you know, selfishly just because I wanted more women and allies to connect with, but also because I wanted to help make sure there was a support system and a uh, community that, you know, fostered, um, helped women feel more like they were part of the industry. And it's definitely, it, it's been really great. I feel like the, um, we're doing, we're in our second year. So we're still like, we're learning a lot of stuff, but, and mm. of course in our second year, there being a global pandemic has made things interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. and in some ways I'm so glad because I do think that it's helped me and the other women in the um, organization, um, either involved in its leadership or just as members it's a, just another way to continue to stay connected throughout this time when we're all kind of, you know, having to stay apart for safety reasons. Uh, uh, what advice would you have for someone interested in joining the field, maybe looking into a career in, in the mining industry? So I think, you know, not being intimidated by new things or to try something different um, is, is an important one. You know, if, if that's something that's holding you back. Um, I think you really don't know your potential until you, until you try stuff like that. And then also one thing I always tell people that are at the beginning, um, you know, interns that we hire that are kind of at the beginning of their um, academic career or an, at outreach events with younger students is any amount of, you know, lear learning a different language is like a huge selling point. Mm -hmm. um, especially here in Southern Arizona, knowing Spanish, we, that's, that's all, always makes a big difference when we're reviewing applicants. Um, but I, like I said, I do a lot of work in Africa. I'm always constantly trying to learn French. I'm terrible at it, but <laughs> I, and I wish, I personally wish I'd invested more time in that when I was, um, an undergrad or even younger when I was in, you know, high school, cause you're, you're, it's easier to soak that stuff up when you're younger. Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah. if you ever want to practice Spanish, um, uh, we can definitely have a awesome. Chat. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> Next interviews in Spanish. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Oh gosh, I'll have to practice. That. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, all righty. Well, that, that those are all the questions I have. Uh, thank you so much for for joining us today, and uh, we really appreciate your time and uh, sharing some of uh, your experiences. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It was really fun.